What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it is almost the end of the year and I'm so excited and I thought I would share with you guys my seven uh, favorite photography purchases, accessory purchases of the year and the last one is amazing. You guys have been asking a lot about it so make sure you stick around for that one. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I posted a question on my Instagram asking everybody what their goals were for 2019. So if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely go check that out because I'm always asking questions and trying to get to know you guys a little bit better. So I got a ton of messages that sounded something like my goal is to shoot more. My goal is to grow my photography business. This guy named Peter Drucker said a quote. It said, if it can't be measured, it can't be improved. So I really recommend when you set your goals to set really actionable goals, things you can check off a list. So instead of saying shoot more, say book one photography shoot per month or set up one creative photography shoot a week. Something that you can check off your list. Set deadlines for yourself and I hope that gets you guys started. So that's enough inspirational talk. Let's get to the favorite accessories. All these are linked in the description below if you wanna check out more about them. But let's start with item number seven. So this one is for iMac users. So if you have an iMac, you've probably had a huge problem, it's been a huge pain to put the memory card in the back of your computer. I mean, it was just so brutal. I've got my speaker back there, I've got other cables. It's just such a pain to reach back there all the time to plug it in and to get it out. So I found this USB hub that's got a memory card slot right in the front. You just attach it under your computer, it locks in real beautifully. You've got your card reader there that makes it such easy access. It keeps all of the cables out of the way and it gives you a bunch of front ports that make it really easily accessible to quickly plug in your iPhone or any other USB devices. It even has a USB-C, which I use for my working drive. And damn it, Apple got me to buy another dongle. I never gave too much thought to an aftermarket mouse. I'd always use the Apple mouse. It was never really that big of a deal, but I went to hang out with my friend Austin and he showed me his Logitech mouse and all of the custom functions that he could apply to them. This got me thinking about how I could use some custom buttons on my mouse to speed up my workflow. So I had a few requirements when I was doing my searching. So the first one is that I had some sort of a side to side scroll wheel because I do a lot of video editing for these videos and I needed something where I could scrub the timeline really easily. The second thing was to have around two custom buttons that were just really easy to access, which I found near the thumb and I've made them zoom in and zoom out buttons so I don't have to then command plus or command control space bar to pull up the hand to be able to do zooming in Photoshop or anything like that. And the Logitech MX mouse has answered all of those. Not only that, but the shape of it is just so much more comfortable in my hand. The Apple mouse is just so flat. And so if you have hand problems, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more efficient, definitely check out this mouse and I can say bye bye to my Apple mouse. Okay, actually I'll just probably keep it in a drawer. Now the A9 is already an insanely fast camera and it crunches through files so beautifully and scrolling through images is really quick, but it has UHS-2 memory card capabilities and I had never really taken a look into this, but I thought I would give it a try, see if I could make it even a little bit snappier. So I went ahead and picked up one of these 128 gig uh, Sony UHS-2 cards, thinking that it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but I, I would be grateful if it did. Popped it in the camera and instantly I could tell a huge difference in write speed. The buffer on the camera cleared so much faster. So for me, when I'm shooting with a client, I'm taking a few pictures and then I wanna show them a picture on the back of the camera almost instantly to just build their confidence and show them how beautiful the image looks without any Photoshop. Then being able to show them, you know, 30, 40, 50% faster has been a huge benefit and I have loved them. So I went out and bought a second one immediately. If you're using a camera that's got UHS-2 compatibility and you're not using it, I think you're doing yourself a huge disservice. You're not getting the full potential of your camera. All right guys, before we go any further, I just have to give a huge, huge thank you to the sponsors of this video. <laughs> I don't have any sponsors. I'm just gonna drink this chocolate milk instead. Oh my God, that's so good. This is such a guilty pleasure of mine. That's why I don't buy it from the store. I, I bought it just for this video and now I feel like I'm just gonna do nothing but buy chocolate milk for the next two weeks. All right, favorite photography purchase number four. 
the GoPro Hero 7. Now I've had a few GoPros dating all the way back to when I flew the Phantom 2 and you needed a GoPro to be able to mount on, on that gimbal. And then I recently picked up the GoPro 5, you know, before this came out because I just wanted something that I could mount in my car, something that shot 4K, something that, you know, did the trick. I really only used it for mounting it in my car because it was so shaky when I would use it. But when I was in New York, I went ahead and picked up this camera and I cannot believe how impressed I am. It's actually the first time I can imagine wanting to use a GoPro outside of a time when a GoPro is specifically the only camera that will work. I actually even gave this to my little cousins that are under eight years old and had them walk around with it and it got actually stable, usable footage. Uh, it was so cool to be able to include them in a little bit of filmmaking, something that I haven't been able to do with any other camera. All right, that takes us to number three, solving the big problem of inconvenience. So whenever I wanted to record a voiceover, I would have to pull out the microphone stand and get the microphone out of the out of its case. And then I would have to plug it into the audio interface. And then I would do whatever recording I needed to do, but then it took up so much space and that stand was right in the middle of my room. I have to break everything down and put it away. Even if I just needed to record one simple line. So now with this desk mount, all I have to do is push a button pull the microphone over, record my line, slide it out of the way, and I'm done. Plus it makes me look like I'm some cool music producer when people come over though. Ooh, what do you work on? YouTube videos. I work on YouTube videos. Okay, so let's talk about my second favorite purchase, which is probably some sort of irony. Atlantis Morissette probably has a verse in one of her songs that talks about this. But for somebody who really doesn't like to use artificial light, this light dome has been the most amazing thing. It provides soft light. I mean, like seriously, all this on my face, it's soft and it's even, but then this is kind of a harsh fall off over here. I've got nice, big, beautiful catch lights in my eyes. It really is just gorgeous. I think that this alone has increased the quality of my YouTube videos, the production value of my videos for you guys, especially since I started about a year ago using a Shamira two foot by three foot softbox. And that was honestly more expensive than what this is. And it produces this absolutely mind blowingly beautiful light that I love so much, thus making it my second favorite purchase of 2018. So that brings us to my absolute favorite purchase of 2018, something you guys have been asking me a ton about, and that is the Atomos Ninja V. Okay, so it's no secret that Sony cameras don't have flip out screens. So I started with this really cheap screen that I, this monitor that I could just attach to the camera and it was okay, but it was kind of hard to read and the histogram wasn't very good. It was just okay, I just wasn't really satisfied. And then a friend came over with his Atomos V and it was so bright and crisp and clear and you guys can't even, you know, but there's three real reasons why I picked up this monitor. And the first is that Sony cameras disable face tracking, right? Face tracking if you plug in an external monitor, unless you're recording externally. So this is not just a monitor, this is also a recorder. So for all of you Sony users who hate that when you plug in a monitor, your camera stops being able to do face tracking, recording to an external monitor like this one will solve that problem. First thing, boom, amazing. The second reason is it allows for unlimited record times when I'm doing something like photographer spotlight episodes, which are somewhere around an hour long. Or for me, I go play in this tennis thing for like an hour and a half and I wanna be able to record all of it without having to go up and around the fence and get back to the camera. So this allows it to just run the whole day on my super high quality A9. Anybody who needs unlimited record times, going to an external recorder is going to do that for you. But the third reason, and this is really the main reason, is I have become really invested in teaching, obviously is what this channel is all about. And I wanna share with you guys the simplest, easiest, most effective ways for you to learn. And I believe one of those things is so that you guys can see exactly what's happening on my camera. Not just a behind the scenes video that shows uh, you know, where I'm standing or, or showing the resulting image that I just took from the photo, but actually seeing what I'm seeing. And you can do that with this camera. You can record the feed of your EVF so you can see the face tracking and if I'm using eye autofocus and what my settings are as I'm changing them. I think it's just invaluable for any educator. So basically the Atomos Ninja V, 
I think unlocks the full potential of your camera. All right, that wraps up the main event. I just wanna give one honorable mention to the DJI uh, Mavic Pro 2. Got an honorable mention because I didn't really use it much this year, but back when I first started flying drones and I got really serious about it, I wanted this amazing quality out of the cameras. And in order to do so, I picked up an S900 from DJI that flew a GH4. And what this meant, I mean, this rig was $10,000. It was massive. I mean, the image quality was crazy, but it was so loud and it was such a pain to take everywhere. So this with its one inch sensor and the 10 bit recording has just blown me away. I did a video on it recently, which I'll link. I seriously feel that they finally came out with a drone that is the quality that I want in a size that I want. All right, guys, that wraps it up for me. Uh, it's been a heck of a year. It's been crazy sharing it with you guys. So in making this list, I realized that I, I really had all of my camera, my actual photography gear. I mean, I've had my A9 since 2017. I've had my 50 millimeter. I've had my lenses. I didn't really buy anything new in that sense. Everything that I bought like sped up my workflow or made my job easier or really just saved me time. If I missed anything, let me know what your best purchases were this year. Let me know what changed your life. Let me know if you're more into chocolate milk or regular milk. These are the important questions I need to know. And lastly, if you have any goals for 2019, if you're watching this in like December of 2019 or something, then what are your goals for 2020? Let's keep this thing going. And I just want to thank you guys for watching and hanging out. And until the next video, I hope you get out and shoot something that you've been wanting to shoot. Get out there, be creative grab a new piece of gear and try something new with it, see what you create, and I'll see you in the next video. Are you serious? Can you guys hear that? Huh, can you?